to Jeff Koinange live at the St. Joseph the Worker Catholic Church here in the heart of Kangemi, the scene of Friday's Mass, Pope Francis on the third of his last day tour of Kenya before going on. What a couple of days it's been with the Pope. In fact, tweets coming in very thick, very fast. Ruth Wawero says, the Pope puts in 14 hours of work a day. How many will you put at his age? Hmm, good question there. Lots more tweets, lots more. In fact, uh, someone else is volunteering. Can't believe that my guest, Father Patrick Devine, the executive chairman of Shalom Center for Peace and Reconciliation and Resolution, you can't believe that he doesn't have a Twitter handle. And they're willing to open one up for you. <laughs> Very good. Okay, Jeff. But I got some guys here who can do that even yeah, faster. I think so, we'll yeah. do that later on. <laughs> <laughs> so, first day dedicated to leadership, second day dedicated to a different class of people, third day, the poor, yep. the youth, people closest to his heart. Yep, because um, I mean, you, nobody is on, under any illusion about society here in Kenya. and. Um, we have some very big slum areas, that's correct. We have uh, experienced uh, a lot of violence uh, at different times. Uh, there is still uh, persistent conflict um, going on, behavioral violence in northern Kenya between various ethnic groups. Uh, there is always the danger of the social pressure uh, cooker syndrome, mm -hmm. you know, because people are really having difficulties meeting their basic human needs in some areas of Kenya. There's a lot of inequity. Um, uh, along with that, a lot of people having the opportunity and are finding it very difficult to even actualize their potential. Yeah. So at the moment, I would say in Kenya, we have what may be considered in many areas as negative peace. There isn't uh, overt physical violence. Uh, direct physical mm -hmm. violence, but there is not positive peace. And what I mean by positive peace, there is not the existence of uh, a sense of where all sides are mutually interested in the well-being and harmony and development of each other. Yeah. And that's a real challenge for Kenya. Yeah. And uh, in that respect, uh, I mean, what uh, the president spoke about yesterday, that is really something the government has to address because there's a danger that if we don't, we uh, or lead the country or let the country drift into a, a state of uh, almost moral and ethical bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying we're, go we're there, but there's, a danger, there's something that needs to be addressed on that. And, um, it needs to be done soon. Well, soon, and I think uh, it, it's a common uh, discussion at the moment um, everywhere about the level of uh, corruption bribery and yep. so on. Yep. So this is not a condemnation. I think, as I said, the president has stood up. Not only that, he has stood up and mentioned the issues. He even has took on ownership. He mentioned yesterday about he as leader of this country, and he asked the Pope to pray for him. Mm. And I think that was a great thing to do, wonderful thing to do. And there's more of that, yeah. because um, we can all be dressed in the finest wear. But what's in our hearts is something very different. Absolutely. And there's needs to address issues at a personal level, yeah. personal level in terms of uh, religious, spiritual, conversion, psychological. There's also the need, I think, to look at how we relate. And I'm particularly thinking about uh, the inter-ethnic conflicts across northern Kenya mm. between pastoralist communities. Yeah, and, and you, and we're gonna, we'll, go, we'll get back to the Pope in a moment, Father, but uh, you just mentioned that, and let, let's go there. You spent a lot of time up in the north, up in Turkana, up in that area, and you've seen a lot of conflict there. Yes. And it's still the 21st century is still very much happening. Oh, sure. And I'd like just, if I, and I will just go into that a little bit. But tomorrow the Pope may be meeting the youth and so on, and there's issues of poverty and that. So it's important also to bring to the picture, because the Pope hasn't the opportunity to travel all around Kenya, that there's such diversity and a, a whole range of different problems that need to be addressed. And they can be addressed, because Kenya has the potential for it. Yeah. Um, Going back up to northern Kenya, uh, you have still areas where there is persistent killing and maiming and displacement of people and uh, between various pastoralist communities mm. up there. And it's gone on since time immemorial. Uh, and in those type of uh, environments, it's extremely difficult 
for social and religious values or in the context of the Pope's visit gospel values such as peace, truth, justice and mercy to take deep root. People can't live normal lives or experience through peace. And secondly, in those environments, it's nearly impossible to have any sustained development because periodically schools, hospitals, religious institutions become inoperable. So are we forever just going to be dealing with the symptoms instead of addressing the root causes? Mm -hmm. And of course, that's what the Shalom Center for Conflict Resolution and Reconciliation yeah. is about. Does that frustrate your work up there? I mean, it seems like one step forward, two steps backwards. Well, um, in my years in Africa, I have to say, uh, I've really rarely ever got frustrated because the bigger the problem, the more energy I got and the more I felt called to go into those environments and to try and transform them. Transform them. Um, as I mentioned, and the church has done a lot at the personal level, but there's a huge need to do work on this at the relational level in terms of how communities uh, communicate, behave to each other, even the stereotyping. But that cannot happen unless we strengthen the institutions in this country. And the institutions are vital because without strong institutions, Corruption, bribery will continue. I have yeah. no doubt about that. Yeah. And without strong institutions, we're in the danger, and this is a big concern at the moment in Kenya, about the upcoming elections in 2017. Mm -hmm. Now, we know what happened in the last, and there's no point pushing it under the carpet, because I do not agree that the, the, the issues have been re re resolved. Not at all. I still think, as I mentioned a phrase I mentioned earlier, there's a social pressure cooker down there of issues that needs to be addressed. Yeah. But now with devolution, and I had a meeting um, two weeks ago with the Religious Superiors Conference of Kenya. There were over 42 religious superiors. And one of the key things they were addressing uh, w during the presentation which I gave was that they're concerned that issues of conflict emerging in Kenya in the future may not be on the broader national level. they will be much more at the county level, mm -hmm. the dynamics internal in counties, because, uh, because of the devolution, we have made kings in counties almost. Yeah. Uh, maybe for the want of a better word. Yeah, yeah. But there are issues there, and we need to be planning for that going forward, mm -hmm. because we shouldn't be living in a utopian idea that everything is okay. Yeah. So what does Shalom do in, a, in, in, in a word? Uh, but by the way, why, why Shalom? Well, uh, we chose the word shalom um, because the, the root meaning of shalom is uh, peace with justice and harmony holistically integrated. Mm. And it's, it's just the same root meaning as salam. It could have been the salam center. Uh, in fact, I was down in Mogadishu and I met the Minister for Foreign Affairs there and he was asking us to come down to help in Somalia. So um, I suggested to him that if I was coming down as a Catholic priest, we might change Shalom to Salam Center <laughs> for conflict resolution and reconciliation. Indeed. Indeed. And he said, I think that would be a very good idea. Yeah. So, so you're not just in Kenya? So well, we are at the moment working mainly up along the border with Somalia, Ethiopia, South Sudan, and uh, Uganda, along the border mm. with, with Kenya, where Kenya interfaces with Uganda. Mm. But now we have entered into a, an MOU with EGAD, Ah. And EGAD, of course, is, comprises the eight states, yeah. and it's headed by my very good friend, yeah. uh, His Excellency, yeah. Engineer, yeah. the Executive Secretary, Mahbub yeah. Malim. Yes. And um, we've looked at now how we will go into South Sudan to look at issues of reconciliation, how we may train the EGAD, um, the EGAD personnel that are involved in the, in the mechanism called Say Warn, Say Warn yeah. the Conflict Early Warning. The Early Warning, yeah. So, Jeff, if I may say, you mentioned, how we go about it. So what we basically try and do is this. We decided that if in our organization we really wanted competent people. So we have two or three guidelines. One is we really want people who are qualified in peace studies and international relations. A minimum of an MA. Two, we wanted an organization that would be interreligious. So we have people from various different denominations and religion. Um, and thirdly, you must be prepared, if you're working with us, to insert yourself into the conflict environments. There's no point sitting here in an office in Nairobi, mm. writing up great documents behind a computer about an environment that you really haven't inserted yourself in and got to know. So we go in and we try to identify the key influential opinion shapers and we start training them with analytical skills and peace building techniques. All and locals? All locals. Mm. And we have chiefs, we have women's leaders, religious leaders, youth leaders, warriors. So we identify them because ultimately peace has to come from the bottom up. Is it working? Well, 
let me say that in some of the places now, uh, because that's one could just let me for give you maybe some of the results on what's happening. Now, as we've been doing that, we decided there's so much conjecture and speculation about the cause of the conflict. It's caused by cattle rustling and it's caused by bribe price and it's all those things, which are, everyone has an opinion, which is no basis for policy. So we were fortunate to come across Professor Wanakaya Moka, who's a Quaker, and I actually met him in the Catholic University, and we brought him to head our research department to counter the conjecture and speculation and to establish with the greatest academic rigor what are the root causes. So we've been doing those in sync. But as we have been doing them, something great has begun to happen. The interest from all sides in inter-ethnic education. You bring the children together, the parents get interested, and so on. So we have a number of schools now where inter-ethnic education has begun, right? It's yeah. only a simple, a simple sure. indicator sure. or result, um, but it's very, very important. At Marijo, just to name a place where the Samburu um, faced the Pokot, and that's a one example, Todinyang, up north of Lake Turkana, and the Marilla, or the Dasanak out of Ethiopia, mm -hmm. and the Turkana. Um, but it's not a quick fix. We are committed, we're five years at it, but the base, there's 5,689 uh, 5, people in a training process, and it's over a three-year period. Now, they have become advocates of their own future. It isn't a pie in the sky. And it's very important to say that for the people up there, some of them may, some of the local people may have limited education, but there's a big difference between education and intelligence yeah, and absolutely. ultimately if there's going to be progress up there it has to come from the people up now one of the issues i constantly raise why have these conflicts been allowed to persist in this country now this country has a history we had um, the colonized or colonized uh, conflict which appears to have settled it's over then we had the shifna war we had the mau mau they all had but why are these allowed and one of the things that i am very critical about is um uh, negatively critical about is that in this country uh, from my experience and I don't want to be looking as like the outsider mm -hmm. coming in Cindy, in my experience in this country elections so far have been basically ethnic mathematics you get enough of the ethnic groups together ideology really isn't a factor now unfortunately for a lot of the pastoralist communities where we work they are uh, they are not of huge consequence in the ethnic mathematics to who becomes or who gains the reins of power. Mm. So these are all issues that we're dealing with. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's a huge challenge. I mean, do you sometimes want to give up? No, never. It's got better. And the team of people we have, and it's, as I said, interreligious and uh, interethnic, and it's growing. Um, we have been asked, as I said now, to uh, help in South Sudan. Uh, now South Sudan, which is another big mess. Yes. And then Amasea, which is the association membership of Episcopal Conference of Eastern Africa, the Catholic Church, in 12 countries. And uh, we had a presentation to them, and they asked for an MOU with us, that we would help them going forward. So we're looking at Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was very happy yesterday to meet his... his um, his Eminence, uh, the Cardinal from Ethiopia, who was down here for the visit of Pope Francis. Yeah. Um, Kinshasa, then Nigeria, and of course we had the Secretary General over to visit us uh, from the Episcopal Conference in Central Africa Republic to look at the model, to s and he's gone back to try and get a team, and then some of us will go over to help them to structure it. Yeah. Now, we do not want to set up an organization with a bureaucracy all over Africa, because then it becomes, like many others, I would say, parasitical. Yeah. And two of the big problems in Kenya society you'll meet, um, whether it be in civic society sometimes, in governance, is sycophancy and parasites. Absolutely. So it's something we have to cover. Because there's wonderful people too, to yeah. keep balance, it's yeah. very important. Ethnic mathematics, I like that. Yeah. I like ethnic mathematics. Well, I mean, you but can but just think right. about it. You nailed it. Um, and you I mean, it. I think it's, it's, about numbers. It's, uh, it's not easy to govern this country when you're dealing with that no, because not. you don't know who's with you today and tomorrow yeah, and um, we shouldn't get carried away either those that are shouting about corruption and uh, bribery and so on often they want to get in at the cake themselves yeah so I'm not saying that's not a judgment on either side but sometimes good point good point my, my friend Pierre Lola Mumba said that the other day those people making the most noise are the ones who aren't in it what would you okay well good point he might have more wisdom than me on <laughs> Well, we're going to take another break. Come back. Okay, thank you. Summarize this whole thing. Going forward, Pope's visit, your work going forward as a nation. Can we inspire people out there? Can we make a difference?
gonna take a break. Jeff Koenig Live is coming to you from St. Joseph the Worker Catholic Church in Kangemi, the scene of Friday's Mass, right there behind me, by the altar, Pope Francis, day three. We're gonna take a break. Keep tweeting at Koenig Jeff, the hashtag, Pope in Kenya. Jeff Koenig Live takes a break. We'll be back in a moment. 